You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. My name is Sean Wilkie, and along with my somewhat awesome co-host, we interview the innovators in this space every week. Ivan, please go ahead and introduce today's guest. Hey, I'm Ivan Zach, and I'm happy to introduce Jared Bolden. We're going to talk about mobile imaging. Jared is a founder of Your View Doctor. He's a co-owner of mobile imaging bittering ultrasound, pronounced My View and spelled M-I-V-U. On a personal side of things, he attended Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, the world's oldest university for aviation and aerospace. His pre-veterinary career was in aeronautical, that's a hard word for Ukrainian, aeronautical technology, developing craft for military and commercial space technologies. And a fun fact that he is a little bit tired today on the podcast because him and his wife, Dr. Connie Shane, had a new baby. Congratulations, having Waylon Thomas Bolden. And welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here today. Actually, this is a lot of fun. So really looking forward to the conversation today. Well, thank you for finding the time. I know how it is to have a newborn. Uh, how how old is, is Waylon Thomas Bolden? Uh, he was just born on November 5th. So um, oh we're just three weeks into this now. And yeah, so a lot of sleepless nights right now at this point. Having a lot of fun. Well, congratulations. So Tell us all about it. So we know that you're, our intelligence tells us you're coming from <laughs> intelligence. And uh, and uh, we want to know how do people convert from building spaceships to veterinary technology? Yeah, so it, it comes from my wife, right? She's, she's the smart one, although she's the veterinarian in the family. And it really all starts with her. It was about 2012 uh, this got started. And um, she was working in general practice for eight years. Uh, we'd just gotten married and we were looking at how we could start a family and how we could get kind of that nine to five Monday through Friday type hours in the, in the veterinary industry. And we came up with this idea for mobile ultrasound, which we thought was pretty novel at the time, but uh, come to find out it had been done in other places. And my wife, Dr. Connie Shang, got connected with an awesome guy named Dr. Marty Henderson out in San Antonio, Texas, who took her under his wing and really showed her the ropes. And from there, we started uh, my view, the mobile imaging veterinary ultrasound service. And we've just been growing the business out for the last eight years and trying to grow a family at the same time. And, uh, you know, as, as that business progressed, you get to a point where you kind of hit a ceiling of what you can do and what we could actually manage to grow with the tools that we had at that time. And just saw a need uh, for some of these tools that, that we built in your view doctor. And so from that point, we started building the platform together and have really just enabled us to scale mobile ultrasound in the, in the DC, Virginia, Maryland area now. And uh, now that we've built the platform out over the last three years, now, you know, the, there's other mobile services uh, across the country that are starting to use the same platform um, that are using the same platform and uh, other service providers that are also leveraging it to deliver advanced care services to veterinary clinics. So, Jarrett, I'd like, you know, it's, it's hard, you know, when we're doing podcasting to imagine what this experience looks like. So I can imagine it's like a two sided. You've got, you know, you've got the service provider and then you've got the clinic. What does it look like? You know, what does the software look like? What's the experience like? Yeah. So when we built it, the, the entire intent was to just make it as intuitive as possible. Right. So we wanted to make sure that as soon as somebody got onto the platform from the clinic side from day one, they would know how to use the service and request those different services without an extreme amount of time of training or indoctrination on, on the platform itself. And at the same time, we're servicing multiple different businesses. So we have folks that have scheduling needs. We have folks that don't have scheduling needs. And mm -hmm. so it's a very flexible framework from the service provider side. And that all of the businesses that use yourviewdoctor.com to host their services have different models and they have different ways of delivering those services to the clinics. We've established a very flexible framework to support various different business models, whether you're a complex business with multiple different 
users and sub users within your business, delivering multiple different types of services to a small startup uh, that's just getting started. We have uh, a flexible way of, of enabling the things that meet your business needs. And so that's, that's really the difference between, you know, the two different sides and how we've enabled those service providers to deliver those services to the clinic very easily. Let me dig even deeper. So let's, let's just take a very simple deployment, you know, kind of vanilla, you know, what's happening in the platform, you know, what does the service provider see? What does the clinic see? What are they doing with this? So is it the ultrasound? So it's various services. So actually, if we go back to the name, Your View Doctor, it's actually a play on the word drive. Okay. The D-R. So it's uh, Y-O-U-R-V-I-E-W-D-R.com. Mm-hmm. And that's a play yeah. on drive and doctor. And so it really was a set up and established for mobile services initially. Mm-hmm. Um, and what that means is, you know, when they're out on the road on a 4G network, you sometimes drop your network connection and you're in the middle of uploading all of your ultrasound images. And so we've enabled uh, the ability to, to restart those uploads or to continue those uploads when you reestablish connection and so that you're not continuously losing those. Also, just continuously saving their inputs as they're typing and, and working out on the road between the various scans that they do that day. And so for, for them, it was initially set up uh, with, with mobile services in mind. And so the mobile services have a network of clinics that they bring onto the platform and that they service. And then on top of that, now we're layering on different verticals. And so we're layering on teleconsulting services. And so there's this network of clinics that are using their local mobile sonographer and more recently mobile surgeons as well, needing the same things as mobile mobile ultrasound uh, typically does. And we have teleconsultants that, that are available both to the mobile ultrasound provider and to the clinic themselves directly. And so the clinic has access to multiple small businesses on the platform. So. Yeah, Jared, I remember one of the things that we spoke about is like the optimization of routes. So, you know, if you're you're out there doing uh, mobile ultrasounds, you know, I can imagine that, you know, it's not you're not driving in a straight line and doing one after another. So that must have been a pretty big technology challenge for you. And how do you guys overcome that? And what does the platform do to address that? Yeah, absolutely. So anytime you're doing mobile services, obviously, there's a geospatial aspect to that and it's setting up you know service areas for that particular sonographer and making sure that the clinic understands how far away that doctor is going to be from their clinic when they request that appointment for that date and time and that then gives them the feedback on the likelihood that the service provider confirms the appointment for that date and time that they're requesting so they'll put they'll put in the request and the service provider will typically confirm that appointment in a couple minutes after reviewing it and make sure that they can provide the service at that time. Okay. So I'm, I'm trying to wrap again, because we're, uh, we're on the podcast. So I'm trying to wrap up my head around it. So uh, I set up a mobile service myself when I was a vet and, uh, and I did it for a couple, a couple months, I think. And I, and I realized that it was a bad idea. It was just hard to drive around and manage what you just said. So I couldn't cope with that. So essentially the, it's a two-sided platform. And then on one side, you have service providers, and that could be, they could be a telemedicine providers or teleconsultancy. They could be a uh, mobile imaging. So they could be an ultrasonographer that travels the clinics, and they could be even the surgeons that do, you know, the orthopedic surgery for multiple clinics. And then the other side of it is, are the clinics where they provide the service and the platform optimizes the relationship between the two. Is that? That's correct. So, so when a clinic goes to schedule an appointment, they have access to the uh, service providers availability. And so that, that availability is all completely configurable by that service provider. So they can mm-hmm. decide how many cases and how many stops they're going to make mm-hmm. within each day or in each appointment window. And from there, the clinic has access to say, okay, the doctor's five miles away from me at another confirmed clinic at this time. And it's likely if I submit for that date and time, I'm going to get approved and confirmed for that case. Now, why that's so important, right? Because before this, before we had this ability, my view and other mobile services, the clinic would have to call in, make a phone call. Right. They have a pet owner that's there that's trying to figure out when their availability is. You have the clinic when you're trying to figure out when they're available. And then you have the mobile service. So you're trying to coordinate those three different people across a, a time and, a, and an availability uh, window. All right. This is super cool. Yeah, this is super cool. 
it took me a second to 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 clue into how this works, but it's it's really really cool. So so now the clinics log into yourviewdoctor.com. Mm -hmm. They look at the availability. They can quickly, without making the phone call and having the back and forth, make a judgment call and, and make a request for a date and time. From that point, they're filling out all the patient signalment as well. And so the mobile sonographer is getting all of that pet signalment coming in with the pertinent medical history in hand to the case, having the background information and being prepared for that particular workup. So, and again, before that, you know, there, there's certainly some other ways that folks can do this, but there's no incentive for the clinic to actually submit that pet signalment and that pertinent medical history when they schedule the case because there is no incentive to do it without the scheduler included on that. Now, some folks still still prefer to, to not have the scheduler involved and, and they have that uh, flexibility to turn that scheduler off if that's how they want to run their service. But then if I'm so so let's say I'm the traveling um, traveling surgeon and I had a friend in Ontario who did incredibly well just doing just that. So he had a nurse. He actually had the like six autoclaves in his basement and then he would travel because it takes so much time to clean the instruments. So he wouldn't do it in the clinic. He would come in, do, you know, TPLOs and he had six sets of, of surgery so he could go do a TPLO with the local staff. He had one nurse that worked with him and then they would travel. And then as they come home, he would, you know, go eat <laughs> dinner. And then the nurse would also do the instruments, repack them, autoclave them overnight and they do it over again. So this is something, but the they struggle was to actually book all of these appointments and manage them. And that's what the platform does. And then in the hospital that uses multiple providers, let's say this surgeon is not available, and then they can just basically say, I want at this time to have a surgery on TPLO because I have a client standing in front of me and they want to do it next Wednesday. And I can go through this software and find out when the surgeon is ready to do out of 10 that I usually use. Is that correct? That's, that's a piece of it. And there's so much more. So, so that, that transpires into the report generation and the post care reports that go back out to the clinic. So all of that information that goes in and submitted on that, that same surgeon and that use case that you just talked about can push out the report. And also we're generating the invoicing and the billing and managing all of that or helping, helping the service provider manage all of the billing and uh, invoicing as well. That's really cool. And do you have to have uh, any sort of integration with their current systems or it's a standalone and it just works like that? Or do you need to access the schedule on the PIMS or? Yeah. So, so actually, no, they, they, they just log into the platform themselves. Mm -hmm. And what we've done for integrations are we heavily integrate with uh, Google Calendar and output to that. And you also had asked earlier, Sean, about traffic and we're integrating with the Google Maps APIs as well. Oh, wow. Cool to kind of get, minimize those distances between each case. But but f from, the, from the clinic side, as far as integrating with the PIMS- There's no real need. There's no need it, because mm -hmm. what we what they do is they actually just log into the URG doctor and submit the case right. from there. And then all of their case history is maintained within that. Now, we, we do generate shared reports and PDF files that they then log back, you know, just move back into their PIM system. And so at the end of the report, there is a shared report link that uh, referral centers will access, pet owners can access without logging into the platform itself. So they can get access to the imagery and to the report uh, view only version. I think Ivan would tell you, you've saved yourself a lot of headaches by not integrating into all of those <laughs> PIMs. <laughs> That's where I was going with it. Yeah, integration is. <laughs> Yeah, it's a challenge. Yeah, it's really interesting, Jared. So, you know, tell us about like where did you start? You know, the early days, and you know, what does the last couple of years look like? What What do you got for usage on the platform, and how are you growing, and what's the future look like? Oh man, it's really exciting. It's really exciting because now we've expanded out to just about every type of specialist that you can think of, from neurologists to cardiologists, radiologists. We got dermatologists that are using the platform. We've got criticalists that are using the platform. And the ophthalmologist, it's just, uh, there is there is no end in sight to the type of specialists that are using it. And what's really cool is that we've recently done a lot of screen casting and screen sharing capabilities integrated into the platform, which enables us to integrate with all of the clinics, third party applications. So they're, they're jumping around on and you sharing the EKGs, they're sharing the pet vitals, and anything else that they have available on their desktop, they just jump over to that and they're using their microphone to talk about the things that they're looking at 
And uh, we always like to say, you know, if a picture's worth a thousand words, a screencast with audio must be worth a million. So they really get to the core of what it is they're trying to talk about to the specialist really quickly. And so um, that's been really exciting to integrate recently. That's great. And so, you know, and are you guys just focused on your geographic area or are you starting to grow across the U.S.? And have you had interest from other parts like Canada? You know, watch out. The one curse of coming on this podcast is you're going to have somebody from Australia calling you and asking you for your service. <laughs> this has happened before. So we've built it to be fast and scalable everywhere globally. Um, and, and we do have clients all across uh, North America using it currently, but it, it works anywhere. So it, it, we're certainly available to work with that uh, Australian client. Or clients. Clients. There we go. Well, I think we're on the mark here and uh, maybe the time to wrap up. So we have two questions that we usually ask our guests. Uh, one is, is there a book, a TED Talk, or anything interesting that you uh, read, listened, or watched in the past that you would recommend our listeners? Yeah, so we're mobile. So uh, the E-Myth audiobook, we use a lot of audiobooks. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I use. Uh, and the second question that we have: Do you know anybody in the industry, uh, another innovator or colleague of yours, that would be uh, good to invite to this podcast? Yeah, yeah, I do. Pedro Armstrong, Dr. Pedro Armstrong from Mobile Pet Imaging. He's doing mobile CT. Whoa! Yeah, very cool. He's doing it right, and he's also, you know, I talked earlier about Marty Henderson and how he helped Connie. Kind of took her under his wing. And so all those folks that kind of help others proliferate this stuff are really interesting to me. And so Dr. Armstrong's doing the same thing with mobile CT. And so folks that want to go learn how to do that or start their own mobile CT service can go work with Dr. Armstrong's group and mobile pet imaging to build that business out. Thank you so much for listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. If you want to hear about our new episodes, please follow us on any social media channel. Also, you can check out our website at veterinaryinnovationpodcast.com. See you next week.